I gotta speak in. I'll just grab it up. And we're live. All right, welcome to my sec Lansing. Um, for those who don't know me, I am Judd Knopf. I am the Lansing my sec coordinator. So those who would like to speak or uh, thinking about it, come see me afterwards. Uh, we can definitely see if we can get you set up for to do a talk. Uh, as far as a couple of my sec events, those that want to continue on with my sec for this week, um, out in Southfield, uh, Steve. Um, is doing a talk on uh, NIST um, cyber security framework and how to build a um, robust security strategy. So, or tune into that. I, I think that's streamed now, correct? Yes. Those are yes. streamed. So you can check out those on YouTube. Um, and then far as announcement, um, November 10th is the RUCTF. So those that are interested in uh, participating in that, uh, out on the Slack channel there is the RUCTF channel and in there there is a link to the Eventbrite. So if you are interested, go out there and sign up on the Eventbrite uh, for the RUCTF um, challenge there. So if that, if there's any other announcements or anything else going on in the community? Nope, nope. All right, with that, I'll hand it over to Mark for an intro into Regex. All right, my apologies while I clip this back onto my shirt. All right. So this is only intended to be a sort of introduction to regex. Honestly, this comes from a like five minute throwaway conversation I had with a, a uh, roommate in college who came home one day from a CPS class and was like, let me tell you about regex, this is cool. And I was like, okay. Regex is basically a way to specify patterns. Um, so when you're searching in documents or lists of things or you're filtering something or you're trying to manage a stream of data, you can use regular expressions to look for patterns in that data and capture those and then be able to work with those in some, some manner. Uh, initially when I talked to Jed about doing this talk, I wanted to do sort of like a intro to text processing utilities in, in like Linux, Unix environment. And he's like, eh, I don't know, I don't know, but like regex. And I'm like, all right, let's do regex. So, all right, so the simplest concept in regex is a character. So the period represents a wild card. It can be any single character. Now, if you want to, if you want more than one character, you can use some other uh, operators like plus, so that's one or more characters. You can do question, which is one or zero characters. So the question is something that's like optional. You can have this one thing or not have anything. So it's a optional match. And then there's star. So that expression there, dot star, is sort of your catch-all expandable empty space I'm just capturing everything between beginning and end um, so that's really useful when you're going between you've got this chunk and this chunk you want to capture everything in the middle you specify the beginning and the end and that just says I'm capturing everything in between um, so other special characters you've got the up the up carrot is <clears throat> the beginning of a line or the beginning of like a match that you're trying to do. And then you've got dollar, which is the end of an expression. Um, in a program like awk, if I can type a K, you have some, you know, print. So you have some awk program that you're running and then in between these slashes you have some sort of regex. Um, you can use you know normal regex patterns but it's a way to say you know the two slashes say this is a regular expression. There's other utilities that also use the two slashes to say this is a regular expression that I'm processing to do some sort of match. Um, so let's see. So we've got the beginning and the end of the line. We've got wild cards. And then there's bracket expressions. So bracket expressions start and end with a square bracket. And inside that bracket, you're 
specifying a set of characters. So you can say like A, B, C, D, E, F, and that will only match the letters A, B, C, D, E, F. Now it will match that one character wherever it is in the line. Um, you can then combine that with our other operators, so you can say A, B, C, D, E, F at the beginning of the line, or you can say A, B, C, D, E, F at the end of the line, or you can say a word that only contains A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, and then, but you don't have to have a completely specified set like that. You don't have to type out A, B, C, D all the way through the alphabet song all the way to the end. You can say something like, and that's only going to capture those lowercase iterations of those letters. So if you want capitals, you have to specify capitals. If you want numbers, you have to specify numbers. Or if you want to contain other special characters, you need to include those in your set. But you can say things like this, a z, you can say a z, so this is all the lowercase letters, this is all the capital letters, and you can combine those as well. So you can say a z, a, a z, a z, and then you can, you know, 0 through 9, you can add in the digits. So so using those core concepts, you can do pretty much everything you want. But we can extend this a little bit further. So let's say you want to match a repeating pattern. You've got some group of letters or numbers, and you want to match some number of those things. So we can say, so let's say, for example, I want to capture a date. So we'll do. 0 through 9, 4, dash, and I might want to escape that. 0 through 9, 2, dash, and 0 through 9, 2. So we've got four digits for year, two digits for the month, two digits for the day, um, and because I don't want this to be treated as anything different, I'm escaping it using a backslash. Um, for something like a period, so we discussed earlier that period, period is a special character. If I want to literally express a period, I have to escape it. This is not a special character, this is a period. In this case, the period could be a wild card, and it would match whatever separator you want between your date fields. But if you need to specify it explicitly, you would escape it. Similarly, for the other wild card and, and other characters, if you need to express a dollar sign, you actually do, I believe, that or escape it. Um, for the star, again, you need to escape it in order for it to be treated as an asterisk instead of a wild card. Um, but we can extend this, uh, the sequences here. So in, let's say I want to, f let's say I'm listing a directory and I want to find large files in that directory. So I assume most people are familiar with the ls command and it's normal formatting. So if you ls and you tell it to output in human readable format, you get like megabytes and gigabytes and those sorts of things. So a pattern that I use all the time at work is actually to do something like this. So I say 0 through 9 g or, so that's pipe symbol in this context, it's not input-output redirection, it's a logical or statement. I'm saying this pattern or this pattern both match what I'm looking for. So 0 through 9, G, and 0 through 9. In this case, I will say 3 comma M. So in the first case, we've got a file that is one or more gigabytes large, because we can match that G as gigabytes in the LS output. And for the other one, that will match both a 
100 megabyte file all the way up to a 1,999 megabyte file, but in this regard, what we're what the corner case that I'm catching is a file that's like 1,023 megabytes and not 1,024 megabytes, which clicks over to a gigabyte. So you capture all of those instances instead of just saying three, which would only catch like 100 to 999. Especially if, in this case, that would still catch like a four digit because the fourth digit would be off to the left, but if you did, you know, begins with, then you'd need to tell it to allow more characters. But you can say, that says three or more of that preceding character. So three or more digits followed by an M. Now, you can also give it like a specific range. That's an open-ended range. So you could say, You could say zero, nine, and you could say I want four digits through seven digits or something like that. Or um, the common example is like a, an IP address. So we know that an IP address is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's what an IP address looks like. So if you wanted to capture that, now, an IP address gets a little squirrely because it can only go up to 255, and there's rules about that. But in a very simplistic sense, you can say 0 through 9, 1, comma, 3. And then you can actually take this whole thing, you say dot, and then you should be able to do something like this. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right syntax for that, but like you get the concept. You've got this thing, this is my pattern. Actually, that doesn't work because I don't want that last period. But, but like that's the concept. So you can say dot, we can actually, whoops, messing up my cut and paste here comma, three, dot, and we, actually put our curly braces in. So that captures four segments of one to three digits. Like I said, it, it's a very simplistic way of capturing an IP address, but there, there are more sophisticated ways, but that's going to generally speaking capture what looks like an IP address. You can filter out things that go above 255 in other ways. Um, <clears throat> so realistically, that's an awful lot of different tools at your disposal. Um, the last thing that I wanted to cover before we sort of like discuss other things and um, I was hoping I'd actually have an internet connection which I'm not seeing but we can play around with the dictionary. Hmm? Okay, so I have two wireless jets. Oh, alright. Yay! Alright, we will. All right, MSU guest. We can do that. I'm not going to do anything nefarious. You must log in. I agree to not do bad things. All right. And. All right, cool. Second part of talk, are all ready to go. All right, so the last thing is talk about 
captures and back references. So if you have, let's say, a repeating pattern, like I said before, and it's not like a specific number or it's not in a specific spot, but you know that it's repeated throughout a, a thing, you can capture that and you can reference back to it. So you can say, so using the parentheses, you capture this thing and you may have multiple captures on a line. So you can say, you can say, let's take our example above. This actually works out reasonably well. So we'll say 0 through 9, 1 to 3. So now we've got this expression. We can reference back to that. So we'll say our explicit period, and then we can say number 1. Explicit period number 1. Explicit period number 1. Now. The only time that's going to match something is if each of the octets is the same, because it's matching that first expression exactly in each of those instances, um, because I've only got one capture. If I had 0 through 9, and we'll just say something fun like 5, and then We've got dot star, and then we've got another capture that's going to be, eventually I'll figure out the shift key, uh, A through Z. Let's say we want that four times. We can then say slash two, and that slash two is capturing this a repeated time. If I wanted to capture the first capture, I can say slash one. And we're just using, I'm just using this as a expandable catch-all. So, so hopefully that's entirely Greek to everybody and we can have some more discussion on that. But like those are the general concepts that have served me well. You've got um, You've got wild cards, you've got the beginning and the end of the line, you've got groups, you've got sets, uh, like ranges. Uh, ranges can be letters, capital letters, um, numbers. You can specify a specific number of something repeated uh, or in a, in a clump. You can do logical ors where you've got this pattern or that pattern. Um, you can repeat something and you can call back to a previously found pattern by using a back reference. So that slash one gives you your first capture, slash two, slash three, slash four, ad infinitum, as many captures as you get within your, your search. Um, so, some fun examples. Mm -hmm. No. The three requires three characters. Okay. You're explicitly saying three characters. One through three is saying a range of one character, two characters, three characters. So and then, and then the, uh, the previous one where I did the comma, so three comma is three or more characters. Okay. So in that specific case, I'm capturing three or more digits followed by an M. Mm. Another question? So why is the range so tiny comma for this So so the squiggles use the comma. I can't tell you historically why one uses one and not the other, but functionally the square brackets capture a set of characters. And then the squiggle brackets capture a, a number of repetitions or a number of, a, a numerical sequence of, of X number of characters. So everybody likes games. So there's this cool game 
that is very useful called regex golf on GitHub, no less. All right, so we're going to uh, increase this so it's a little easier to read. Everybody cool? I can make it bigger. So, so we've got a list of things we want to match on the left, and we've got a list of things that we don't want to match on the right. So any thoughts on what pattern exists in the left side? All right, well, let's, Kyle here suggested two O's, so we'll say, we'll say O, O. It's like, all right, well, it's, it's matching something in the right side that we don't want it to match. So we need to make it a little more specific. So some other people mentioned foo. And given this, these do not have an F before the O's, so foo. Look, we matched everything on the left and nothing on the right. Yay, golf clap. All right. Looks like I need to shrink this down a little bit so that I can navigate to the next one. There we go. So. All right, so any ideas where the, what the pattern is here? Maybe zoom in a little more. All right. All right, I guess I can still get to the get to the navigation. All right, so we've got ick. So alone, ick is matching pretty much everything. So we need to say, well, where where is ick? Well, ick is at the end of the line. So now we've got a match for everything with ick at the end of the line. All the icks in the middle of the line don't get matched. So, so we've succeeded. All right, there we go. This one, I honestly have no idea how to solve this <laughs> because it excludes you using the end of the line character. So I don't honestly know how to solve this one. Um, I'm sure it's Googleable, but that sort of takes the fun out of this. So, all right. <laughs> well, it, just because I'm the one giving the talk does not preclude anybody in the room from being more knowledgeable than I am. Uh, well, if you match any character that's not FU, you're not going to match anything in the left row, I think. So the question mark says, contains this or not contains this, sort of that one time. It's, it does not have to go with the dot. You, so if I put a question mark at the end, what that's matching is F and also maybe U. The U, the U does not have to be there, but it's allowed, it can be there. It can be there zero or one times. So if I say like plus, that is one or more times. Can you do like carrots dot star FU or something like that? So that matches everything up to the letters FU, but the F, but because because it's, it's just the last well, so you could do that. You could say it must contain one letter, 
but now we don't match strictly the letters F U on their own. Well, why don't we just type and then literally match F U? So what I did. <laughs> <laughs> or F U. No, no, no. no. So backspace. What I have is only the bottom word else. What? What? Okay. Go back to the one that matched everything except F U correctly. Okay. So. It's it's ultimately over specified. Let's not give up yet, though. <laughs> we we could be here all night, and there are more there are more productive things to do. It's on GitHub. Anybody can play with this. Also, I'm sure answers are Googleable. I'm sure at some point I Googled them myself. Um, so so, what pattern do we have here? Well, that's def that definitely sounds like a good start. So let's say, if I can click in the input box, A through F. All right, but in the right side, we do have some word. We most of the words contain a letter from there. So what else do we have? Okay. So how many times should I repeat it? Okay, so we'll do three comma, close, very close. Let's, let's try four. Winner. So like beam, beam here has three letters in a row, but the M exceeds that, uh, that range that we set A through F, so I think it's funny, like, you're looking for a very low score. It's like the number of characters in your regular expression. And, like, the people that, that get one are just cheating. They're just, they're just modifying the regex to give, or modifying the, the JavaScript to give themselves a low score. <laughs> to which they admit in other, other parts of the game, like, I don't know regex, but I know JavaScript. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> It's so like, you're a dick. <laughs> but anyways, okay, so here, so they're, they're giving us hints along the way. So back refs, we want to capture something, and then we want to see that a second time later on. So we're going we're gonna to do something in back, or we're going to capture some regex, and then we're probably going to make reference to that regex. So... All right, so we'll say A, Z, three. So we've got a range A to Z. We're matching three letters in a row. So we've got a three-letter sequence. And then that three-letter sequence is repeated further down the line, exactly those three letters in that order. So we, we're referencing. We've got our catch-all to fill in the blank. And then we've got our reference back to our original pattern. So, three letters, three letters, three letters, three letters. All right. And more cheaters with a score of one. Oh, admitting that he didn't know it. All right. Let's, let's pretend this one is not a rehash of the last one. So,
Hmm. Well, so somebody mentioned two characters in a row. So let's try AZ. So we want, so we'll say two letters repeated. And we can say not two letters repeated. Okay, so what it sounds like is we've got, so we're going to say A, Z. So we've got reference one, but now reference one is the first one. We want to invert that. Two, no, one. That was the one. Go back to after A to Z square bracket and then put a curly brace to. Where, where are we going here? A to Z, this one, bracket, two. two. And then a big old exclamation point on the end. Okay. No. <laughs> say one and not two or not this one you want to match the second list and then say don't match the second list. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well somebody wants to tell me how to write that out. Like I can accept that that's the answer. <laughs> I'm not sure how to write it in a way that this understands that. I mean, realistically, you know, e even though we're not solving this problem, using the back reference to say I want to match two and then one, we can see that it's matching this pattern of letter, double letter, repeated letter from the beginning. So realistically, we should be able to use an exclamation point in some way to say not this. Um, but I'm not sure exactly how to implement that here. So this is JavaScript. No, I thought this was based on Perl regex. It's using the JavaScript regex. Anyways, discussion of various <laughs> flavors of regex is the discussion to read through in the man page of the find command. <laughs> but anyways, um, so we'll, again, we'll skip over that one for the purpose of having a more enjoyable uh, exercise. It's very similar to golf exercise. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. All right, so let's try, let's try a somewhat similar. Um,
So can everybody at least see what I'm doing there? I've got three, so three, three letters that are being captured individually, and then I'm saying include, so back reference, so repeat the last letter or not using the question mark. So repeat the last letter one or zero times, and then repeat the second letter one or zero times, and then repeat the first letter. So in the case here of like civic, we're repeating one, two, three, two, one, or here is one, two, three, three, two, one. Same for here, one, two, two, one, one, two, three, two, one. Well, yeah, also because, actually, hold on. It looks like, it looks like what we need to do here is this. Dot star. There we go. So match the two letters at the beginning and then reverse those at the end. So we've got capture one is the first letter, capture two is the second letter at the beginning using the caret at the beginning, and then our wild card expandable space. And then we're matching the second letter from the, from the capture, then the first letter. So we're reversing the two letters, and we're saying it has to be at the end. I probably could. Let's find out. Yep. So you have to have at least... Typing without looking at the keyboard. Anyways, so I believe this one actually says just cheat. No. Yeah. Repetition probably becomes very, very weird. Ignore the name of this level. cheat. So not all of these are like obvious. But anyways, so this is, a, this is a fun exercise to do in your own time, like play around with it. It's fun to sort of watch, watch the matches show up as you're typing out regex. You can see it live matching stuff. Um, so the other tool that's very useful in, in, as far as like, I've got this chunk of text and I need to pull this thing out of it. And I'm not, sh and you just like, you're trying 17 different graphs and you're just like, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. How on earth am I going to match this? So this is regex101.com. You can put your sample text here in this input field, and then you can start typing your regular expression here. It will show you exactly what it's matching and explain why it's matching that thing like what pattern you're using is capturing this thing, and it'll, it'll color code it, like this part of your regex is matching this thing over here. And as discussed earlier, there are various flavors of, of regex, so you can actually select, do you want Perl compatible regex, JavaScript regex, Python regex, apparently they've added since the last time I was here, Golang regex. Um, so like there's a lot of tool available to you in a convenient package. And again, it does that sort of like live highlighting. So as you're writing out your regex, you can see what is it matching, what is it not matching. Um, it's a very useful tool for figuring out how to capture something. Um, <clears throat> the one last thing that I was going to mention, and I'll go back 
get my pointer to come back here for a second. So, so as, as I was discussing the, um, the question mark character that says one or zero of something, if, if you want to capture something up until you get to some end point, you need to pull something out of the middle of the line and you need it to not keep go you match until the first match, don't match the last match and catch everything in the middle. Um, you can do something like dot star question mark. And then outside of this capture, you have like a comma or a semicolon or a or like a space character. And that's going to capture from, you know, login equals thing up until space. And then there might be some, you know, user equals pass equals. On the line, if you want to capture this login, you can say, uh, you know, login method perhaps. You can say, you know, login equals thing. Now you've got this space separating it on the line. You can then dot star question mark the next thing and dot star question mark the last thing. Or, you know, end of line. <coughs> so in that example, you're going to get the right side of that field but not the next field. You don't want to capture to the end of the line. You want to capture until you meet some separator character that's going to limit the field down to what you want. Now, um, so the funny story that I can tell about that is I was writing some, uh, some sort of log parsing script, and I wanted to do something very similar to that. Uh, I think I was looking for modsec errors in a web blog, and, and I needed to do... Uh, as one of my coworkers said, you're looking to do non-greedy regex. And I was trying to use the sed, t sed command. And so I Googled how to do non-greedy regex in sed. And wonderful stack exchange said, you don't. You use Perl. And I was like, well, I guess I'm learning some Perl today. Um, turns out you can actually do non-greedy regex in sed, but you have to say sed r and R tells said to do extended regex, which is a GNU extension to said, so it's not a POSIX extension to said. And on BSD, it doesn't work. So fun times. Um, but let's, uh, let's jump out of this for a second. Man, find slash regex. Hey, I'm not a pro. So, so regex type, and there are several options for regex type. Um, <clears throat> Emacs, POSIX awk, POSIX basic, POSIX egrep, and POSIX extended. Um, and for So, and grep has its own, like, do you want to use grep regex or do you want to use Perl regex? Um, so there's various different flavors of regex. Um, so that covers everything I know about regex. There's lots more to know, but hopefully that gives everybody sort of a starter to play around with it and not feel completely lost and not go, man, what on earth is all of this Greek gobbledygook that I'm looking at? Um, honestly, regex comes from, I believe there was, a, there was like a math, a theoretical math paper where some professor was saying, you know, we really need to have a way to very explicitly define patterns in mathematics. And from that theoretical, like, we should have a thing, some guy at Bell Labs back when Unix was being developed was like, okay, I'll just implement this. And now we have regex. So, you know, it's all actually from a mathematical basis, which is probably why it's so confusing. <laughs> so, do you pronounce it regex or regex? 
Not touching that with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> it's pronounced GIF, and I'll fight you for it. <laughs> Anyways, so hopefully that was relatively informative and entertaining, and uh, that's all I got.